everybody, welcome to our next episode of Our Favorites. favorites. I feel like we have to do that now, like the Spongebob imagination. Our Our Favorites. favorites. We're in a cult. (laughs) In a cult. 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 cult. We're a cult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fun. Okay, but now here's an interesting take. We're doing our favorite Marvel movie. Yay! But not the Marvel movies you're thinking of. No! All the Marvel movies outside Zing. of the MCU. Dun, dun, dun! And to start it off, I get to go first this oh, time. Pat himself on the back. Look at me here. <laughs> and my favorite Marvel movie, not in the MCU, is the first Deadpool. I think the first Deadpool is probably one of the tightest, one of the funny... I, I know! <laughs> I know that's Chuck and Gordon immediately because of what we were saying. Right I wasn't going to react and then I see out of the corner of my eye cheek <laughs> going like that. I think it's paced perfectly, but you obviously have a different... No, I... Uh, no. It's, it's a style of humor that is funny for me the first time, but after about an hour, I'm like, let's wrap this up. I'm getting sick of this. Is it like Will Ferrell style humor? That's a little different. That's more of like, okay, this this is fun. And then by the end, you're like, I can't, I can't take the screaming anymore. I, I can't, can't take it. But, like it. but but it's still a good. Dead, uh, Deadpool's still a good movie. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. I was getting pretty sick of it by the end. Oh, I don't know. I, I just feel like it just gets better. Each scene gets more and more ridiculous, more and more just entertaining. Just everything between Ryan Reynolds and I. For the love of me, I can't remember the um his blind grandma's name. Um. This is your favorite. This is my favorite movie, but I can't remember her name. But every every interaction between those two is hands down just but I mm, mm, it might be funnier than everything except for Thor three in the MCU. I think Deadpool outweighs, and that's not just because it has an R rating. I think Ryan Reynolds just he understands who Deadpool is, like what, and he just. He is that character, and he just nails it every single time we see him. It's his third best Deadpool performance. Second <laughs> please, is Deadpool 2. Please tell me. And first <laughs> is X-Men Origins. Oh, my God. That, yeah, no, you're right. That is the best Deadpool iteration ever. I will say the funniest Deadpool anything to me is the mid credit sequence after Deadpool 2 when he gets the, the time machine thing. And goes to all the other movies that he shoots Ryan Reynolds before he can read the Green Lantern yeah. script. Yeah, okay, right. And he goes, you're welcome, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> that, it, has, it doesn't really have much to do with the actual movie because it just oh, undoes no, no. everything, but it's so funny. That's that's why I like, I like the, the, all the comment, like, just the commentary be, beyond the movie. Like, everything with him and Hugh Jackman that were in the first movie. But he pulls off his mask at the end, and it was Hugh Jackman's face. Like, I just... I just uh, cracked me up. And also, just be... I mean, I, I can physically remember the first time sitting in the theater and watching it. And, you must have been losing it. I'm pretty sure that whole theater oh, was probably giving you weird looks when they weren't God. laughing. I could just like th- this guy. <laughs> oh, I could only imagine how much the people would have hated me. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna say I sat next to you for Thor Ragnarok, and I st- I bet you I lost ten percent of my hearing in my left ear. <laughs> As every five seconds you're laughing at something, I'm going like, wow, watching movies. This guy's wild. <laughs> It just, oh my god, I, I could not, I could literally not stop. Like, since the very first frame, where it's crap, what song was playing in the very first frame? It's, um, I can't remember what the first song was, but just like the the the, end, the credits with like, directed by an idiot, written by these two schmucks, or like whatever, it was like that. <laughs> to them for not caring if they got their names and the actual credits because the credits joke was perfect. Oh, I don't you, know. You, I you, just, you've seen it, right? Yeah. You've never seen Wait. the first Deadpool? Nope. What? Or the second one? Nope. Aww. Wait. What? Correct. You've but never you seen... love Ryan Reynolds. Correct. How have you and never you seen And you like Deadpool? Deadpool. 
that's not accurate. I don't know. You hate Deadpool? What? No. You just don't care? I don't care. I've, I didn't know you never saw that. When it came out, it was a choice to not sit through two hours of that type of humor. And it just never changed. Fair, I, I tell you, at a certain fair. point, for me, it's like I can't take this anymore. Oh, man. I, if anything, it's changed the humor in in superhero movies overall oh, and absolutely. not for the better. Because they all try to do it with PG-13 ratings. <laughs> it doesn't work. That's true. It yeah. gets very tiresome. That's true. You can't really do a Deadpool's humor without cussing it. Because it's all quipping. But for Deadpool, it makes sense. But then when every single superhero movie out there, it feels like, at least in the MCU, it's just all quips. It drives me nuts. That is true. I, I, I do feel like that's... I, I don't know if that's... Started at, when did Deadpool come out? Remember what 2016. Year it was? 2016? Yeah, it's been six years. Came out around Valentine's Day, didn't it? I, yeah, 2016? I wouldn't say it necessarily the MCU tried doing their quipping humor because of that. I think it ramped it up, I, though, because it realized, hey, this this does work better. Let's just start doing leaning into this more often, because... Like Guardians of the Galaxy leans into the quips, that, and that was two years before. That's, but that, that's what I was thinking. But I think, I think because Guardians... of Deadpool, not just the MCU, everyone's ramping up the quips. It just feels like that in movies, too. It's all about the quips. I mean, to be fair, when when you knock it out of the park so hard with the first Deadpool, it makes sense for people to want to try to copy that formula. That's just, yeah, that's what happens in the industry. Yeah. But just, it's very tiresome. I, I I thought the, like the last action scene, just like with them, I, I just the last action like the that big those big set piece. I thought that just worked absolutely perfectly. Like I thought just from pacing, from editing to writing, I just thought it. It's just interesting. That you see, you got tired of it, like because like the action so scene's fun, but by that point, I'm like, I'm I, I kind of want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been here this long. <laughs> was so uh, it was two hours. Somewhere in there, because I, I I don't want to. I if I'm going to break my streak, I'm not breaking oh, it. I'm dead. You're, you're not even going to try it. No, because that one time seeing it, it's like I couldn't even get a good get a good feel on how long this is because I was just like. But I do think the the interesting thing is I know you guys or at least Jared pointed out before we started talking is you thought the second one was better than the first one. Yes, I think the first one did was more of a. I'm a sucker for a good origin story. And that's war. <laughs> and that's where I like the first one more. But I could see how you like the second one more because they do a lot more with his character. I think they do more with his character. I think the humor is more standable, even though there's plenty of jokes that don't work, just like the first one. I think Cable just makes Cable, Cable. and Domino are just a lo- both of them just make it a better movie. That's fair. I will say I do. I did absolutely adore the beginning where they um they did, killed the entire X Force team. That wasn't. That's like the middle of the movie. That was like the really the first twenty minutes, wasn't it? It's not that early. No, really. I'm mean, just not remembering as well as I thought I did. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that for me was was the best gag in the whole movie. Was them just <laughs> really the, and, and don't let's not forget Brad Pitt's epic cameo. That lasted about three seconds. Not even. It's like three frames. <laughs> I just, yeah, I ate that up. But anyway, that is my favorite is the first Deadpool. So next, we're moving on to Jake. My favorite Marvel movie, um, not in the MCU, is uh, X-Men Days of Future Past. Now, to start off, I just want to say that I really love the reboot of, um, you know, the the younger X-Men yeah, generation. The McAvoy and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast Bender. That mm-hmm. <laughs> those movies really uh brought to light my love for uh Michael Fassbender. Oh yeah. I still have never seen First Class or Apocalypse. I've seen Wait, the you never other seen two. First Class? Nope. Ooh, first class was good. That that's the one the first oh, actually that was the first first one of the That's young Matthew movies. Vaughn, right? Yeah, that was Matthew Vaughn. Who directed Days of Future Past? No, I'm Wasn't to... it Brian Singer? That's Brian Singer. It was Brian Singer. Okay, so he came back. I enjoy the three of them up until Dark Phoenix. I haven't seen Dark Phoenix, but from everything I've heard, I won't enjoy it. That's kind of, I'm in the same boat. I, I skipped out on Dark Phoenix and Apocalypse. 
Uh, don't forget the New Mutants. Oh my god, I did forget the New Mutants. Holy crap. It's not really Everyone forgets the New Mutants. <laughs> that thing got delayed like 20 years. Oh my gosh. You were saying about Days yeah. of Future so, Past. <laughs> what I love about Days of Future Past is I grew up with the original X-Men the movies. And I love the new ones. And this merges them through the bridge of Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart. Um, and just the way that it starts and the way that it weaves the story um, in and out, it it reminds me of um, the 1990s X-Men show. Yeah. Like, it, it reminds me of something that's, like, actually ripped from the comics. And yet Rogue still doesn't fly. <laughs> you might want to give up the goat on that one. <laughs> I just know people always be like, why does he fly? What's, what's the problem? Why? Why? And. Like, yeah, that's like a big part of her character in the show from what I remember. I've not seen much of the show, but I've not seen the rogue cut of this movie because they cut that side story out of it completely. Have you watched the rogue cut? Yes, but not for a very long time. Okay, I was going to ask what you prefer, but I I, I guess you don't remember. I don't. I have not seen that cut. That'd be interesting to watch. Now Now, Wolverine gets sent back in time. Is it Kitty who's doing it? With the... Yes. Okay, because isn't it, it's mm-hmm. supposed to be, is it in the comics, Bishop has that kind of power to send people back, but they switched to Kitty? I think so. Something like that. Okay. Did they bring, was it Elliot Page who played Kitty in the I, older movie? Yes. The, 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 yeah. The, the third movie? It was Last Stand, she, right? I think they, they were in the second one and the third one. Okay, and then, might only be the third one. I think Kitty's only shown in one scene of the second movie where they go through the wall at the beginning, but... I, you don't see them ever. I think it's that. But they brought back Elliot Page for that role. Okay. I'm trying to remember. It's been a couple of years since I've seen it. It's been a while since I've seen it. It's been a while since I've seen it, too. I used to have a Daisy Future Past poster up in my uh, college dorm. Oh. Man, that, that that was a cool poster. I, I dug that one a lot. Yeah, this is yeah, this is the first Quicksilver anything for yeah, X-Men, yeah, yeah. right? Oh, was that, that, wait, really? This was the first time? That was the first one where he's running... Uh, Around the, around the circle room, to, yeah. To, with uh, was it was it Sweet Dreams that was playing? I think. No, called? that's the second. That's Apocalypse. That was Apocalypse. As well. No, it's the. Well, what song to, is it? I'm trying to remember because I the can folksier sounding. I can song. see and the then scene. They go ahead and waste him in Wandavision. <sighs> what a tease! They they knew exactly what they were doing. They knew exactly <laughs> what they were doing. <laughs> oh oh, here's the thing though. You know how he has like he has. He's one of the best parts of Days of Future Past. And then in Absolutely. Apocalypse, I've seen the scene where he saves everyone at the school and everyone says mm-hmm. that's the best part of the movie. I, I, I've actually seen that part, but I think it's just that part. Uh, in Dark Phoenix, and it's not really a spoiler, just because he's he's barely in it. And his his cool scene is in the first five minutes and he duct tapes someone uh, in a spaceship. He's inside the spaceship that's... and just... And then he's out for most of the movie after that. They, they kind of don't use him. I still kind of want to see it. I, I'm just saying it's not a but, big spoiler because it's not a big part of the movie, but it's yeah, like I know. They take I, the I, best part I, of these movies. Everybody talks about it like it's a terrible thing. I still kind of want to see it just because closure. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's fair. I will. I want to give a quick shout out to how incredible Evan Peters actually is as an actor. He was in The Mayor of Easttown, and that, he was just really good. That. I just wanted to throw that out there for everybody that wants a new Evan Peters thing to watch. He's really, really good in that show. But anyway, <laughs> but that's not what we're talking about. We're I, talking I, about Days of Future Past. The only thing I really can definitively say about it is I love the way that it, and I know I already said this, bridges together the two generations of them and then moves forward. And then all of a sudden it's a different timeline. And you're like, okay, what actually changed? And I think Fastbender really comes into the he, Magneto role. Oh. Whereas I think in like first class, it was kind of. You know, it, it was, was it was that questioning thing. It was him working on being the like I mean that we know of um yeah, the, the old Magneto that we know is like he's really working into that role. That being said, I don't really like Jennifer Lawrence as uh as a uh, oh gosh. No what, oh, mystique. What, yeah, what did you say she's... the the emotional range of a fish? <laughs> that's for that's for don't look up, man. No. <laughs> it's one of my favorite she has like ever. She has like the emotional range of a dolphin in this movie. <laughs> so that's a little bit more. A little bit, just a little bit. 
At least has a blowhole. What? Jake, I want to say something that. <laughs> well, that took me by surprise. Uh. I was going to say, though, in days of future past, the, the other things that I remember are the the scene where McAvoy and Stewart are in the same room together. Yeah. It's great. And also, uh, Kelsey Grammer putting on oh all that beast God. makeup for one moment and, was um, awesome because yeah. he's perfect for he's beast. Peter, so Peter Dinklage good is in uh, Days of Future Past too. Who was? Peter Dinklage. I think yeah, was. Oh, right. yeah, no, I love Dinklage in that movie. I was going to say that he that's right, Magneto so... lifting the, the stadium. Is yeah, yeah, so yeah. Cool. That's, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You, oh, man. You got me. You're making to... me want to watch it I was saying, yeah, that's the same thing. You, you're itching me to want to rewatch this again. I, and I want to circle back around something you said because you want when you said it bridges the two generations together and moves on to a new timeline. You know what that makes me think of? The Last Stand. Oh, I was going to go with Spider Man No Way Home. Oh, it seemed like they did they did No Way Home before No Way Home did it because they brought back. It's different, but yeah, like uh, like just like the bring back the old generation from movies that were separated and now connecting them all together and like. That like feeling of euphoria of seeing your old favorites meeting your new favorites is exactly what Marvel hit in No Way Home, and I just think that it's cool that no that uh quick X-Men quick sidebar first. here. What do we think the chances are that the fan outcry for a third Amazing Spider-Man movie is gonna be or it's, gonna it, make that movie happen? It's not gonna happen. I would love it to, but I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> Going back to the Brit bridging the thing, I said the last stand because he. Magneto lifts the bridge to Al- and moves to Alcatraz. So I'm like, Dickie's gonna make some stupid, <laughs> stupid comparison to that, but he didn't. No, I did. Which it, it makes sense, though, right? Like, I feel like it, it bridges like the two generations, and they do their own thing. Yeah. It just X Men did it first. That's all I'm gonna say. X Men did it first. It's just a shame it was directed by Brian Singer. Mm. Yeah, that. I'll, I'll never forget. Around the time the controversies where we talked about when Bohemian Rhapsody was coming out Mm -hmm. and you were reading the article to me at work when we worked together Mm -hmm. and you said something on the set of the movie Apartment Pupil and I laughed (laughs) and I looked right at you and I go, Dickie, apt. (laughs) Apt. (laughs) It's it's the thing. I get it. You'd never heard of it, but you're like, Apartment Pupil. Apt. Apt Pupil. (laughs) It's just a great. I saw APT, so I was like, yeah, that's "Apartment Pupil stands for apartment." <laughs> there was no period. No. Well, Abbreviations have a period. Was, I just thought it was assumed. <laughs> oh, assumed! <laughs> it's assumed. I just assume that this is in the title. I, you know, I forget. Apt is a word. It feels like it shouldn't be. It's a, it's just like why you have something against you have something against apt. It's too short and feels just wrong. What do you mean too short? Like there are words with one letter. Like what? or are you supposed to I, assume that there are other letters? A no, well yeah, but those are those are like just oh like, that is too. That's not that's not all. No, 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 no. The one letter word is ooh. <laughs> Our national anthem starts with O. Just O. They might have the apostrophe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's so a lyric, that's a lyric, so it's, uh, it's a little bit different mean? class. It's a little different class. But there's punctuation. It's, it's and that's class. punctuation that you can actually see. Well, I mean, there was also punctuation, except it was missing from apt pu- pupil, which is why it's apt pupil. I, I, I just stand by the fact that apt shouldn't be a word. <laughs> Days of future past. Apartment pupil. We should Days of Future Past. I love it. It's my favorite of the X Men movies because think- if you know throwing out the other two, because yuck. Like the only thing that first comes- class is great because yeah. it's different. Throwing out three because yuck. Throwing out two because slow, and X Men one is. If you thought X two was slow, I like X two. Yeah, I love see, X2. it's goofy. I was going to choose X two before you went with that. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> Everybody hates me because I don't like X2. And it's not that I think it's a bad movie. It's just that I don't like it. That's fair. But, you know, and then you go back and you watch X-Men 1. And it's slow. It's also very visually dated. Oh, like, yeah. In like well, the like worst possible right? ways. It's like, But you have to, there, there are, you have to, to cross the river. You got to have the stepping stones. Yeah, That's but watching stone. Wolverine spin around the. 
the tine, <laughs> the tine on the on the crown of the Statue of Liberty. Oh, is it's like, so funny! It's like, oh, oh! Don't forget, the, don't forget Toad with his long tongue. Oh gosh! Hey, that was Ray Park. That's Darth Maul. Yeah, it was Darth Maul. All right, so Jay, what was your pick? Uh, I know the two of you. Wow, yours is a more pop. Actually, you're both pretty popular picks. That's I was just saying, like, I picked like the popular pick, which is. Spider-Man 2. Oh. Everyone's talked it to death, especially in the last year or two, because of No Way Home coming out. But I picked, because it's, it's my favorite one, non-MCU, which even with the MCU might be my favorite one still. And it's 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 one of those things where when it came out, and in the years following when I was growing up, that's everyone's favorite one. Mm-hmm. But over the last couple of years, a lot of people love that first movie and like it more. It's campy but it's fun oh I, there's I definitely the a different one. tone oh it's a it's a yeah, yeah you, you have to know what tone you're getting into and then when you can you enjoy it and how do you not love willem dafoe i mean just, well, that's true just honestly yeah but go ahead with your pick yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i just like how they build the ultimate sympathetic hero not that he wasn't sympathetic at all in the first one he is that first one's very good just i like how that op- just the opening five ten minutes set up like Man, he's having the worst luck. That's and it's coming as a direct result of him choosing to be Spider-Man. I feel like I've watched countless, countless video essays on people saying like, "Oh, the, the way they just they berate him down, they beat Toby down as much as they can, so he goes back up in the end." It, it, they absolutely nailed that. And part. it makes sense because it's not it's like there's bad luck in there, but also it's all a direct result of his choices. Because he's doing both, he's nor- trying to be- live normal life and be Spider-Man, it's interfering with things. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense when he gets to the point where he gives up. It's just... Yeah, I mean... I, he I remember, wants to live a normal life, too. And it, it, you know what I mean? It's, he loses the focus. I remember we're just watching that scene like where he tosses his um, suit in the garbage can. And it's like... Whew. Like, that, like I, just, I just felt that. Like, he's just finally... He's just done with it. Is... The ring scene in two or three. That's the third one. Okay. Wait, every time you like two, where he flips and the ring is flipping, and he and is, he tries to catch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. three, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that's the first act what? of three. You're I, I like make two more than three. Three, the iconic. I will say Parker scene. Yes, it was picked on for over a decade. Because, you know, and I liked it in theaters. And afterwards, it's like, yeah, this is not as good as the first two. But I think it get it, at least it used to get a ton of hate. Yeah, it's so and insane. I don't think it deserved it because <laughs> you, you remove a couple key elements and it's on the same level. It's the studio wanting Venom in the story and Sam Raimi going, no, I don't know. And they're like, yes. So that's what it is. You take Venom out of it and you, you, know, you have to rework a couple things because of that. I think there's a lot of good, there's still good stuff hey, in there. Hey, mm-hmm. if it weren't for Venom, we wouldn't have gotten one of the best things ever, which is Bully Maguire. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That is the, like, come on, are you telling me that little dance he's doing? Is the this? the other day, I watched someone, someone in their infinite wisdom, took the time <laughs> to do a Bully Maguire cut of the entirety of the final battle from Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> It is the most, just the, just the most extra thing ever, and oh, I love it. That sounds it, phenomenal. And the thing with Bully Maguire, it's less about actually being funny. It's more about, okay, they're going to use the same five or six clips. Where are they putting them? Because, like, mm-hmm. hey, everyone from the first movie, and don't forget, I'm going to put some dirt in your eye. <laughs> they always do that. It, it, it comes down to where are these going to get put? Yeah, it's gold. I, like when he gets stabbed by here. <gasps> Isn't that that? <laughs> I, it's one of the times yeah. he oh, he gets cut in the beginning when, with a fight with Harry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I know we're supposed to talk I, about Spider-Man 2, but I do think 3 gets way more hate than it deserves. Because I still like it. I haven't seen it in a long time. It, you're like, right. It's honestly just the Venom piece of it. And Topher Grace was not no, not a great was choice. He, he does was, not hit the Eddie Brock look. No. Who, That's who, one thing I can give to Tom Hardy. He He's pulling off Eddie Brock pretty well. Yeah, who on earth watched that 70s show and said, yes, that's the kid. That's that Venom. Be Venom. That's Venom. <laughs> like, what, what, what cat 
casting director thought that was a good idea. A- a- apparently that one. Apparently. Whoever cast that movie did great with the, all the other roles, but really? Really? Two for fruit? Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll let it pass. But the villain of Spider-Man 2. Oh, my God. I really, really like, as most people do. And it's because the Goblin one is different because the Goblin is like his, his Spider-Man's biggest adversary, right? I, I feel like that's like the so most So that's an iconic one. one, and that's more of a the experiment on himself made him that way mm-hmm. type thing. Whereas Octavius, yes, he loses control, but it is fueled by his desire to do what he wants. It's And I think such... that's... It, it gets a little murky when it comes down to okay i get that they're controlling him but like he turned pretty hard but also his wife died his wife died and i'm trying not to say it's a negative it's just it's like yeah i can understand where people's criticisms are like he he did kind of just flip a switch but also like it what a great villain oh my god that honestly is probably one of just when you talk about grounded villains and just empathetic villains like that is he is like high 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 on that list it is hard not to love him (laughs) and everyone always brings up the so he needs to know where spider-man is by getting to peter parker so he throws a car at him yes what if they hit him (laughs) like everyone's brought this up for for years like you could you could have you could have killed him and then you'll you'll never know how to get in contact that was the arms thinking and i don't think the arms were that bright it's kind of like fighting back and forth between the arm's brain and his brain, if you feel like. I think that's kind of what helped to just give him that next level, was just because he was so smart. And we're jump, jumping back on the Danny Elfman music. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That, that. There's that theme, I can't remember which one, the specific name, but they use In No Way Home at a part mm-hmm. with the reunion scene. At, at the end, I was like, man... That's such good music. It's it's getting me a little misty. I just it's an it's nostalgia bait, but oh, done I, in the best way. Yeah, it's like if, if these characters are near each other, of course they're going to talk to each other. Right. It's just oh, and that's like jumping like kind of no way home, just tying up the loose ends in um Spider Man Two. That movie when, knew what it needed to be. It did. No way home. It absolutely did. And like when seeing um, I want to keep wanting to say Toby, but seeing like Toby's Peter and Doc Ock meeting again like that i feel like that was the perfect button on spider-man 2 i feel like that should just like you should have to watch this movie after that so you can see how their relationship finally comes to an end like i, I just well, you kind of have to watch it after spider-man 2 okay, otherwise there's no context I, I know but i feel like it's just like it should be like required viewing like 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 that like that's the end of that movie like it just it, it takes it ah it just it did it so well I know I'm trying to talk about Spider-Man 2, but like No Way Home just fits so perfectly into that. I just love it so much. <sighs> All right, you guys. You got anything else you want to add? No. No? No. Nope. All right. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Jerry, want to give us a social media shout yes. out? Yes. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok because apparently we're funny. Stop. <sighs> And never gonna end. <laughs> and you can look. The- <laughs> Reading <laughs> rainbow. To be fair, that's probably not gonna be trending by the time this comes out. But maybe it still will be. We'll see. Still a fun song to sing. Still a great song. And in the meantime, you can listen to us on Spotify, the Evil Overlord, Apple Podcast. Please leave us a rating and a Google Podcast and Stitcher. And then you can also go to YouTube and see how funny we look, and maybe subscribe and like and comment and tell us how goofy we look. Absolutely. Thank you again for staying up to date and watching all of our episodes and watching this one. We love all the feedback. If you got any, make sure to tell us. So from all of us at Offslate, thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.